Hi, this is Leah from Open Intro. In this video, we will see how to carry out a hypothesis test for a single proportion and how to interpret the p-value of the test. Some people claim that they can tell the difference between a diet soda and a regular soda in the first sip. A researcher wanting to test this claim randomly sampled 80 such people. He then filled 80 plain white cups with soda, half diet and half regular through random assignment, and asked each person to take one sip from their cup and identify the soda as diet or regular. 53 participants correctly identified the soda. Part A. Do these data provide strong evidence that these people are able to detect the difference between diet and regular soda? In other words, are the results significantly better than random guessing? When you see the word significantly better, uh, that indicates that we're probably going to be carrying out a test of significance or a test of hypothesis. So the first thing we need to do is figure out which test of hypothesis to do. We have randomly sampled 80 such people, so that implies that there was one random sample, and we're looking at one proportion. Each person either uh, got it right or they got it wrong. So this is going to be a one proportion Z test. And now we'll set up our hypotheses. The null claim always says nothing's going on. Uh, they're just guessing. So if they're just guessing, what proportion do we expect to get it right? 50%. So our null claim is going to be that P is 0.5, that they're just guessing. Where our alternate claim is going to be they actually know which one it is. They're doing better than guessing, that P really is greater than. 0.5. We can set our alpha to be 0.05, our significance level, and now we need to check conditions for the one proportion z test. We need one random sample and both np and n1 minus p to be greater than or equal to 10. Here we do have a random sample, it says so, and when we check our condition, let's uh, make sure to use the p from our hypothesis. So in this case we're going to use the p of 0.5, not our p hat of 53 over 80. So you can see here we use this value here. These are both greater than or equal to 10, so our conditions are met. Now we can calculate our z-score. Our z is going to be the observed minus the null value over the se. The observed is the 53 over 80. That's about 66 percent. So <clears throat> yes, in our sample, greater than 50 percent got it correct. So why are we doing this test of hypothesis? Because our hypotheses are never about the sample. They're about the population. And so what we're really interested in is, is this enough evidence to prove that people in the population, assuming that this is a random sample and they're representative of the population, that people in the population can do better than random guessing. So we have our p hat is 53 over 80 minus the null value. That's this value here. 0.5 and now put it over the SE. If we forget the structure for the SE we can always grab a formula sheet. So it's going to be square root of P1 minus P over N because this is a single sample and a proportion. And so just as we use the hypothesized P of 0.5 when we checked our conditions, similarly we're going to use that same value down here because we are hypothesizing that P is 0.5. We're going to Assume this is true for the purpose of our calculations and see what happens. So plug in the 0.5 there. And now uh, we can calculate this out manually or we can use a calculator shortcut. So I'm going to pull up a TI-84 and we're going to go to STAT, Tests, and this is a one proportion z-test. So we'll go to one prop z-test. Enter. P0, that's the null value, that's this null value here, 0.5, our hypothesized value. X is how many yeses? So it has to be an integer. 53 yeses, 53 people got it correct. If they had given us the correct as a decimal or a percent, we'd have to multiply it by n to figure out how many got it correct and make sure that that's an integer. And now n is 80. And our alternate hypothesis is a greater than, so we'll choose the greater than sign and then do calculate. And we get our z of 2.9 and a p-value of 0 0.001. So we can record those values. 
sorry, 0 0.002 if we round. And now that's less than alpha. So our conclusion is reject H sub O. And if we reject H sub O, we have evidence for HA. So what is HA saying? We have evidence that people are better able to detect the difference between diet and regular soda better than simply guessing. Okay, part B, interpret the p-value in this context. So our p-value here is 0 0.002. So <clears throat> we can say that there's a 0.2% chance that at least 53 out of 53 people in a sample of 80 would have guessed correctly if H sub O were true. So the logic of our test of hypothesis is assume this is true, assume H sub O is true, plug this value into the calculation, find our z-score, in this case shade to the right. So we could similarly say there's a 0.2% chance we would get a z-score this big if H sub O were true. That's equivalent to saying there's a 0.2% chance that we would get a p-hat this big if H sub 0 were true. And now put that into context if H sub 0 says they're guessing. So if they were just randomly guessing, i.e. if the true p really is 0.5. So it's very unlikely we would see the sample proportion if people were really guessing. That makes us reject that hypothesis and believe that eh, people were actually doing better than guessing. That's it for this video. For more free resources, check us out at openintro.org.